31. Use the data in Appendix L to calculate equilibrium constants for the following reactions. Assume 298.15 Kelvin if no temperature is given. And then we just have to find the equilibrium constant for this equation, which is HD 2 plus aqueous plus 4 BR minus aqueous, which comes to equilibrium with HD BR 4 2 minus aqueous. Okay, so we're trying to ultimately solve for an equilibrium constant. That's a K value. And the only number values that they give us is to just look in the back of the textbook that uh, is being used here in Appendix L. And the Appendix L um, leads me to cell potentials, which are E values. And from E values, you could always get an E cell value. Now, the question is, well, how did I come to the conclusion of picking these two half reactions? Well, the first thing is, is that two halves always make one whole. So I need to pick two E values that will make this equation. So I just kind of scanned and I saw, I just basically like matched, right? I saw that I needed HGBr4 2 minus, and that was here. So that's all good to go. I noticed that this equation had the 4Br minus in there as well. So that matched up. It did not have the HG2 plus because this HG doesn't have the 2 plus in it. So I just needed to find the other half. And then I found the HG2 plus equation. So that's how I came up with these two half reactions. Now, let's just say to ourselves, okay, well, how am I going to get an equilibrium constant from just E values or, you know, E cell values? And that's this formula over here. E cell equals RT divided by NF times the natural log, the LN of K. This is what we're solving for, which means that I should know RT, N, and F, and the E cell. Now, I don't have the E cell just yet. I just have the cell potentials for the uh, two half reactions, but I have to make them into one whole equation. And that's going to be using the formula, which is here. This is E cell equals just the cell potential of the cathode minus the E cell, the, uh, not the E cell, but the, the cell potential of the anode. And just remember that the cathode is always talking about reduction while the anode is always talking about oxidation, right? Reduction is always gaining electrons and oxidation is always losing them. You could tell that something is undergoing reduction or is at the cathode if your half reaction has electrons on the left side. On the flip side, oxidation, or at the anode, your electrons will always be on the right side because that's how you can tell that your electrons are being lost versus being gained at the reduction or the cathode. Now, one of these has to be the reduction side, the cathode, and one of them has to be the anode. Now, if you look here, standard practice is they're always going to give you a half reaction of your electrons that are on the left side of the yield sign. That means that always in the back of the textbook, the appendix values, you're always going to be given a cathode as your two half reactions. You have to change one into the anode because one has to be the cathode and the other one has to be the anode. But which one am I going to change? Well, this is just looking at your equation and just matching up once again. Now, if I notice here, Hg2 plus is on the uh, left side and the equation that has it is also on the left side. So that matches up. But the other one, like HgBr4 2 minus, that's on the right side. But over here, it's on the left side. So we can kind of see which one has to be flipped, right? This is on the left side. Seems like this equation has to be flipped. And when you flip your half reaction, that always means that you're turning it from the cathode into an anode. So my Hg, Br4, Br4 2 minus, half reaction is at the anode, and then the Hg2 plus is at the cathode. Now we don't have to multiply any of these values, it's whatever those values are in the back of the, the textbook, in the appendix. 
So E cell equals cathode, which was the HD plus one, so that's 0.851. And notice how if you are using cathode minus anode, you do not have to you know, swap the signs of this. Whatever those values are, just write them out. So this would be minus the 0.21, and we're gonna get that number. So 0.851 minus 0.21, Technically, we should only have, you know, something to the hundredths place. So I'll just say that this is 0 0.64, and that's volts. All right. So now we have my E cell value. So I can now go over to the next uh, formula. I'm just going to maybe get rid of this because I might need more room. And, okay, my E cell is 0 0.64 volts. And now I just need to know what RT and NF are. Well, R is a constant value here. So whenever you're using this formula, you're using 8.314. F is also a constant. So you got two constants here. F is Faraday's constant. That's 96,485. Temperature has to be in Kelvin. And they told us that if no temperature was given, we're going to use the 298 0.15 Kelvin. And then the N value is the number of moles specifically of electrons, because we're talking about oxidation reduction reactions, specifically electrons that are transferred. Now, when you look at your half reactions, you hope that the two half reactions have the same number of electrons. And in this case, they do. Thank goodness. Because if they already have the same number of electrons, that's how many electrons were transferred. And that's what your N value is going to be. So in this case, N was equal to two. If they are not the same, you have to multiply by a number to get to the common value between them. And now we're just gonna solve for the K value. So let's just plug this all in. 0 0.64 equals, I got a long division with an LN of K. I have this, I have this. That's good enough. Okay. So 8.3 through and 4. Then we have 298.15. We have two moles that are being transferred. We have the 96,485. And then we have ln of k. What I would do first is I would just simplify this. So I just go straight to Calci. I say 8.3 through and 4 times 298.15, I'm going to divide by 2. And now, since I'm not using parentheses in my calculator, and I want to show that Faraday's constant is in the denominator, I'm just going to press divide again, 96,485. Uh, all the numbers look good. And I get pretty long decimal. I'm not going to round because um, that's not the final answer. So this is 0. 0.0. One, two, eight, four, five, six, one, nine, and that is ln of k. Get the natural log of k by itself. We're going to divide by that number, right? 0 0.0128456619 on both sides. 1284561. This cancels out. Goodbye. That wasn't that wasn't a good cross. Let's try again. Oh, that's better. Okay, so this is going to equal the ln of k. And I'm just going to say 0.64. I'm going to go up and grab that value, press enter. Syntax error. Oh, boy. What did I do? Oops, I press, I did the decimal instead of the division. That was my mistake. 0.64 divided by, I go up here again, I try one more time. And there we go. So once again, I am not going to um, round this number. So this will be 49. 49.8224 And now if I want to undo the natural log, the inverse is e to the. So I have to do that on both sides to be fair. This will cancel out, and now I'm left with k equals 
second LN, that's the E button, grab that whole number and just press enter. Don't you love the TI-84? Just makes life so easy. K equals 4.3 times 10 to the 21st. And that is your equilibrium constant. Whoop, whoop. There we go. Okay, what'd you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. I hope you all are doing well out there. Thank you for being part of this community. And let's just keep studying hard. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. And if you wouldn't mind, uh, press the subscribe button and that will, you know, help the channel out. Just gets the word out there that this channel exists. And tell your friends, tell your classmates. We might be able to help them in their classes as well. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.